Uh, very special. Mikey likes you. Um, it's been a while since I've had any guests, but I'm 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 really excited to welcome to the show for the first time a top tier client of mine on Patreon. So it's it's uh, really meaningful to me because I you know I, I've never really in a professional capacity talked to someone who I work with in a professional capacity. But uh, this client is really special to me because he is equally, if not more so, motivating to me going this way than I could ever be going back towards him. And I want you to welcome Jake Denham. Thanks, Mike. I appreciate it. Uh, do people call you Jake or do you go with Jacob for being, uh, cause it's being formal and all that? I go with Jake. It's only Jacob when I'm in trouble. All right. um, Fair enough. And, you know, we talk about my progress. I might be in trouble, but for now, we're good. Um, yeah. So what's going on, man? Uh, life is good. Give me, give me just a little bit of your story and your background and why people, you know, need to know exactly why you specifically are as, uh, motivational to me in, in going in that direction as I may be to you. Right. So I have a condition called cerebral palsy. Um, it's pretty common at this point. I think most people have heard of it. A famous example that most people have seen would be the son on Breaking Bad. Yeah. He has the same condition I have. Um, he has it a little worse than I do. Um, he does forearm crutches that he walks with. I used to have those. I sort of found those a little bit more cumbersome. Um, the way it impacts me is the right side of my body um, is affected. The signals from my brain just do not get to that side of my body um, fast enough or efficiently as they do to the left side. So either it takes more concentration, uh, more work, or it just flat out doesn't work. Um, is, so, it, is it like, a, pardon the question, but is it like a synapse thing? Like your, your brain will say, move this part, move your, my right arm, and it, it literally just like the chain doesn't fire like it does with people without cerebral palsy? So... That's the cause. Essentially, what happened is I was born without oxygen, uh, 11 weeks premature, uh, umbilical cord wrapped around my neck. So that part of my brain just sort of died. Right. Um, so it's kind of rewired. The brain, you know, it rewires itself as need to be. So sometimes the synapses won't fire. Sometimes they, they will, and they won't do it properly. Um, an interesting thing with cerebral palsy is that if I stop doing something, I can literally like lose the ability to do it. Um, and I have to retrain the brain how to make those things fire again. Uh, like there's things I used to be able to do that I don't, can't do anymore. Um, granted, a lot of it's because I don't have to do those anymore, but um, that sort of is what got me into fitness. There is definitely a, if I do not stay active, there is a very, very sharp decline in my physical ability if I don't keep pushing myself. Um, at least move, you know, do whatever I can, stretch, do jujitsu. Um, as far as how I got into fitness, you know, like I said, I have to stay active. So since I've been about after I got adopted at age five, they started putting me in physical therapy to sort of establish a baseline. And I'd say my body got programmed to, hey, you always need to be need to be active, need to be doing something. Um, so once I got eight turned 18, went to college, no physical therapy was no longer in the cards. So I, I sort of had to figure out, hey, how am I going to stay active? What am I going to do? Uh, there was a lot of trial and error there because the general reaction I get is, you know, you shouldn't push yourself that hard in the gym. You don't want to get hurt. Uh, most doctors are focused on uh, just staying injury free versus improving anything. Right. Um, so, you know, I've just sort of been in general fitness. I, I stayed pretty active. Um, and then I found you. And you really embrace the idea of pushing me and not sort of giving me boundaries on things. And we sort of work with, you know, I can do this. I can't do this. How hard can I do this? Um, and we go from there. And uh, it's been a lot of trial and error. And I feel like we're finally on the right track. But you've been great at answering all my questions. And you definitely don't treat me with kid gloves, which is probably the number one gripe that I have as far as dealing with people in general. Yeah. And, you know, I, that, that was always my goal with everyone in life was that you know the last thing i want to do i think it's the, i think the most denigrating thing you can do to someone is lower standards for them 
Yes. Um, r- regardless of who it may be. Um, and that being said, there's from an intellectual standpoint, obviously you have to take into consideration. I can't program, you know, like Olympic lifts, you know, for, yeah. <laughs> you know, you have to take everything into consideration. But I, I um, I, I, I'm curious, like from a from a purely like a human standpoint, is your motivation to engage in things that definitely are putting you on the cliff of being super challenging? Because I would imagine, look, you could play it safe and, like you said, just stay mobile, do a lot of physical therapy to keep your your tactile skills, you know, up to snuff, and then just kind of go about it. But you're you're getting into jujitsu and and heavy w- resistance training, full body complex movements, and is is your is there an internal drive to kind of show everybody? It's like I I am pretty damn capable, and I'm much more capable than I than you probably think I am in your brain. You know, silently festering yeah. in the back of your brain where you think I'm made of fiberglass. Yes, you've you've nailed it. Um, that's sort of definitely my drive is to show people a what I can do and b what they can do as well. Um, I get people that come up to me in the gym and, you know, tell me that I'm inspiring them to work harder. And that's great. Um, It's, it's a for that and B for me as well. Um, I like to remind myself, Hey, you know, I can improve, I can do better. Um, So I'm always pushing. And it was weird. I sort of didn't realize this whole, I mentioned kid glove treatment until I got out of sort of out of college and into the workforce. Um, And I noticed that, you know, people really had lowered expectations for me in general. Uh, they were just like, oh, you have a job. That's great. Not that it was a great job or, oh, you, you have an apartment. That's awesome. And I'm like, okay. Um, and I definitely noticed it in the gym. I went through a few trainers and they, they were like, hey, you know, let's, let's just do like some, some dumbbell bench with like 25 pound dumbbells. Um, and that is certainly not the weight I use. I use 50 pound dumbbells for 10 to 12 reps. Um, and I keep telling them, no, no, I can go harder. And they're like, no, there's no point in doing that. Um, and, you know, I try to drive it through them. I'm like, this is not what I want to do. I'm here to push myself. I think it ultimately comes down to most people with my condition have it a lot worse than I do a lot worse. And I, I'm like the, I'm on the edge of, I'm very, very lucky and I can do what I can do. And I sort of look at it as a gift, almost like a, an obligation that I must, I must take advantage of the tools I have and right. sort of see, see how far I can take it. And, and as you I'm, know, I you've take certainly it done that. You, and and I, I, I would never, I wouldn't put myself in the category of anyone who sees someone with any condition and then lowers my expectations or lowers my standards for what I would ask of them. And but then I, as you were talking, I was thinking about it, I was like, I definitely do that in combat sports. And I wonder how much that applies for you being out on the jujitsu mats, because I, I will be honest that, you know, I will be going with women who are way probably technically better than I am, but they're 135 pound women. And I, I won't go as hard. I mean, I won't like, push a choke. I won't like elevate my hips as hard and pull down on an arm bar as hard as I would with a guy of the equal size. So it's not a matter of just like, like goon strength. I I, I flat out am am kind of lowering my standards because it's a female and it it sounds horrible. I, I actually think it's gross saying it, but I do it. I do it. And I wonder how do you see that when people see you approach the mats on a wheelchair, they're probably like, oh, well, I can't. I'm not going to put my head down in this guy's head and, and, and smash him. Oh, I see that. I see that all the time. Uh, and my instructors see it too. And it's, it's very funny because they will tend to, they'll feed me that person. They'll be like, Oh, this, I know this person's not going to go hard. And then, you know, it takes me 15 seconds and there's a submission in there and then they sort of learn the lesson. Yeah. Um, that is the fun thing. That is what I really, what I love about jujitsu is that when you sparred, you can go, there's no, there's no, yeah. You have to dial it back a little bit, but there's no sort of uh, going super light. Um, but I see it all the time. And generally the people I roll with now, they know, you know, there's things I can't do. So if you really want to beat me, there's like an easy path to get to it. But as far as taking it easy, they don't do it. And I tell them, you know, this is a, this is, I don't get better when you do that. And it's offensive to me when you do that. I understand you don't want to steamroll me, but at the same time, 
um, especially in jujitsu, you're, you're there to make your partner better and you're not making anyone better by, you know, just going through the motion, so to speak. I, I, I think that that is the actual, like the, you pinpointed to me, um, because I think it's almost cliche to be like, well, to see someone with a condition that affects their, um, mobility and affects their motor skills to get out there and be so physical, it's motivating. Well, I, I go, yeah, it is, it is, but I also have never looked at you or anyone else with any other condition that in that way, what is inspiring to me about you is that I work with all these different clients of different levels. And so many people are so quick and so happy to place regulators on themselves and to place self limitations on themselves that they'll just say like, well, I can't train that many times a week. I, I, not because I don't have the time. I can't do that. I can't, I can't follow this strict of a diet. I just can't do it. And it's a matter of like in their brain, they just tell themselves and I've done it my whole life with intellectually, uh, professionally. I've, I've always, you know, for 20 years, I was the kid who barely, got out of high school and I was always the class clown and I was never really good. And I kind of took that with me, not because I wasn't intellectually capable, but because I told myself, I was like, I'm a dummy. I'm a dumb fucking meathead. And whenever I interact with you, it's always a matter of like, well, this didn't work out, but let's figure out a way to go. And, and there's never been this kind of sense of self imposed limitation. There's just, horizons that you're going to reach for regardless of how you get there yeah uh i appreciate that you know i want to be clear i i have bad days just like mm -hmm. everyone else where i don't feel like doing anything um and you know luckily you mentioned this on your most recent pod um don't treat going to the gym like a chore it's a uh it's a good relaxing time um to you know lift heavy things and not think about the other parts of the world but yeah it's just a <laughs> no one is if you limit yourself it's just a great disservice because other people are going to limit you every time um people have their own stuff to deal with they can't spend their whole time you know telling you you're great you can be great you can be great um and you know there's an old theory i think um from the book of five rings once you see the way in one thing you see the way in all things um i think once you've you've exceeded your own expectations in one area you start to realize hey you know maybe if I just push a little bit harder in this other area, it works. Um, and I think fitness is a great, great one for that because um, you sort of, you build on it all the time. You might, I think that's the thing that addicts me the most to fitness is that it's just the incremental improvement, the sharpening of the ax. It's the same thing with BJJ. There's always part of the blade that needs sharpened and you just sort of stack it on top of each other. I couldn't agree more to me. And, and I, I, I've hammered, I'm sure, to someone like you who listens consistently to me. And then obviously we interact numerous times a week. Um, you've heard me say this stuff before, but it, it, I want I wanted people so desperately to understand that like improvements in physical fitness, improvements in your physique, it has nothing to do with meathead bullshit and, 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 and actual muscle. What it is about is that it's such a clear way to find incremental improvement through something that's really difficult. And that opens up your eyes to every other aspect of life. I mean, it makes it really easy to start seeing how you can apply yourself and, and make achievements in, in other ways. It's like a real comprehensive development, much more so than it is about just looking better come summer, you know? Yeah. I think if I had to boil it down, this applies to almost any industry is most big changes in life come from fixing a few fundamental items here and there and just sort of going ahead. And the problem is that there's no money in selling fundamental change. There's money in selling fancy this, fancy that. Um, the two equivalents are like, we'll say like flat tummy tea uh, or a get rich quick scheme. Mm -hmm. um, that's just not the way to do things. Sort of the barring like a winning the lottery or your company going public for a bunch of money, the way to build wealth is to slowly save it over time. And just like the way to make real physical change is to sort of go to the gym on a regular basis and eat right and get your rest. And then barring other things, it'll take care of itself. Um, I, I think that that's a, an excellent point and I couldn't agree more. And I was actually thinking about this uh, yesterday morning. I got up and read the paper and I was thinking about how that is probably the biggest reason why we can't have 
solid political structure in this country because what what would really 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 work what would what if a man and a woman actually did something that was fundamentally useful to improving the country it would not be exciting and it would not make for a good campaign no you know and it's it's usually uncomfortable uh what you need to do is not what you initially want to do uh like we'll say government spending if the government told everyone if the government told everyone in the country you know you need to tighten your your uh, belt straps or tight you know cut your spending or cut your emissions if you want to go that route most people be like oh country needs it but i'm not going to do it everyone (laughs) else can do it uh it's stuff like that so i sort of especially in the fitness realm the way i've dealt with that personally is not be dependent on outcome just learn to focus on the process showing up lifting you know weighing your food and going from there and the outcome will take care of itself down the road Uh, that's a that's a perfect segue into kind of some of your personal recent struggles when it comes to fitness is that you know you recently got a dexa scan and you had been losing weight and you've been really really so disciplined about adhering to a caloric set point and getting the right macros training your ass off and then you didn't get the results that you were looking for there was actually a a, a, there was a, a substantial weight loss and and you were happy about that but there was actually some some lean mass loss yeah so i lost go ahead sorry go ahead no i was just going to say that you you have such a positive attitude i mean it's easy i'm sure very frustrating but at the same time you're like okay uh i acknowledge and now it's time to adapt what can we do yeah uh i'll I'll even break down the results so i had an eight month i think a dexa scan with an eight month difference um i'm going to change that and sort of do a month to month deal now so we can dial it in better and not deal with this again so i lost nine pounds and i was thinking oh this is nice fat loss of nine pounds it's been nice and gradual uh no turns out i lost seven pounds of lean muscle mass um and uh the fat that i I lost fat in every area except my belly and actually gained fat around my midsection which is like literally the opposite um and you know there's nothing i can do about it we just sort of have to figure out what i did wrong and go from there and did i have a few days of pity party life uh yes for my own mental health i took the past like two days off of weighing my food um i ate some things i haven't eaten in a while and I feel better for it. And now it's just back on the, you know, back on the track. Um, you know, it's a, it's a personal journey. And I, you know, as much as I like you for your services, it comes down to me to do the things right. You can push me in the right direction, but it's on me. Um, if that makes sense. It's like, yeah. I mean, I always, I always said that I wanted to be kind of a lighthouse, not the boat captain. Oh, you good. have to you have to be the captain of your own boat i you know but i i'm more than happy to kind of illuminate directions to go but mm-hmm. i i think that you know if we're going to get specific about that um which is something that a lot of people deal with because they get so if if they if they interpret themselves to be overweight and body fat loss is going to be the the paramount goal not just weight loss um you know there has to be kind of like specific choices that are made and oftentimes it gets really really frustrating and then sometimes you might even need to either keep the same weight or gain weight in order to kind of do the end around and get to where you want to be you know you got to kind of get into and i think that that's something that you're specifically probably going to have to deal with even more because of your um condition you're you're gonna have kind of hormonal setbacks and chemical setbacks that a lot of guys um might not normally encounter which most guys encounter anyway but you're gonna have have them to a to a greater extent um and and so you know like for you specifically now i was i i want to talk about like we can start to scale back things that are going to be purely kind of metabolic and start looking to be anabolic and just get you a little bit more jack they're subsequently making you a more efficient metabolic machine um because i've said it many times before the best thing you can do to stay lean is to get bigger is to get more more jacked um and that uh, women hate hearing that but adding muscle to your body adding lean muscle to your body is the best thing you can do for longevity is the best thing you can do for for overall kind of fitness and and for 
um, retain retention and then kind of making something sustainable long term. If you're twenty percent body fat as as a man. Um, and you start to lose weight, it's so much harder to make sure that that's going to be the weight you want to lose. If you're 10 to 12% body fat, meaning you're, you're kind of yoked out, yeah. it, gets, it gets pretty easy. You just got to kind of stay in this little window. And so from here on out, you and I got to, you know, we, we got to go and look at, like, like you said, you want to be the rock in a wheelchair. Yes. Yes. The rolling rock. Uh, the rolling rock. Sick. Yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm sure the beer company might have something to say about that, but so be it. We can we can talk. Uh, that lines up with my profession. We can have that conversation. Um, but yeah, you're right. I'm at, to be frank, I'm at 20% right now, yeah. um, which n- nobody would believe when you see me. I don't know. It's just the way I carry it, but most people assume I'm at like 13. Um, well, also, that's pretty average for a guy. It, um, a middle-aged man in America being 20% is actually probably ahead of the game yeah it's more that higher standard thing and i think you i'll speak about my mindset here a little bit i have a problem to not want to be average at anything and that's not a way to to live life you have to make compromises in in certain areas or you're just going to grind yourself into dust uh and i think one of the problems we're running into and you can speak about this probably is that i i have a real problem not going super hard in all areas of fitness you know that I, I lift, I, I do jiu-jitsu, uh, and I hit the rower all the time. And I, uh, I don't know, you can speak on this, but I think perhaps I'm just over, overdoing it. Oh, absolutely. I mean, that's the number one thing you can do is, is to take it easier on yourself. I, I, you know, I've been talking about that with you from the beginning. And if, if anything, if I were to say that I'm guilty of treating you differently and lowering my standards for you, because of your condition if in the one way that i can say that i'm guilty of it it is that i allow you to exercise those things and i don't mean exercise like physical exercise i mean to exercise to enact them i allow you to engage in more things than i would want another client to engage in specifically because i know you're getting at your soul more so than you're doing it for your body when you told me you're like i want to be the first person to row a certain amount of 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 meters in a year and you were doing and and concurrently training in bjj and concurrently um lifting heavy weights i i you know i would have told everyone else that i work with i was like you're listen you if you want it all you're going to get none of it and And you're seeing that the result but with you i was like well this guy this guy needs this to 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 scratch that itch he said he's a fucking lion this guy's got a lion heart and i'm not going to tell him not to do it so but you and I are both at this position now where I have, I have, I at least have some kind of tangible proof to my theories of like, when you go for everything, you get nothing. Yeah. Uh, and you know, that's, that's, what's great about you. I think most people would be like, Oh, we're just going to keep letting them doing it. It's, it's inspiring. It's nice. Um, but no, you know, I have goals and you're, you're holding me accountable and, uh, we can have this be like a full a client session on the video here and people can sort of see what it's like, but you know, this is, this is what's great about it. Um, and, you know, I think my goal was to row a million meters in a year um, while lifting weights and doing Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. And shocker, as you know, I got injured um, and it's been a, a tough injury to get over. I'm finally over it. But how long would you say without a commission? Like three months? Yes. Just, I haven't done a pull-up in three months, which was like my go-to lift. I can bang out probably 25 bodyweight pull-ups without stopping. Um, and that's easily because of rowing and lifting and BJJ. And the wheelchair, my shoulders just were like, hey, let's, uh, let's dial it back here a second, buddy. Um, and now here we are. I haven't got my blood test back yet, but I'd say my testosterone level is probably pretty low. Yeah. Um, you know, um, you know my, my sex drive is, is lower than it should be. Um, I'm getting great sleep, but I think that's because I'm literally exhausted. Like I can literally just fall in bed and pass out in th- three minutes. Yeah. And uh, for those who don't, Jake, Jake's also an attorney and a, and a, and a good one and in a, in a, in a high powered kind of category. So on top of all the things he's talking about in the world of physical fitness, he's, I mean, he's got a very demanding, very stressful job. 
Um, I can almost guarantee you that your hormones are going to be out of whack because there's also those little signs. Like you said, libido, when your libido goes and you're not 70 for men, I always go, that's number one bad sign. Number two is, is that all that body fat that you that you didn't lose actually went to the belly area. Another great sign. You know, now we're talking about instead of the sex hormones, you're looking at things like metabolic hormones like T3, T4, stuff like that. But there's going to be some kind of problems you're going to run into when it comes to hormones. And then you can also, you can take care of that without just going the TRT route. How do you do that? You take your foot off the pedal. You know, you finally listen to your body and and oh, just devote yourself to lifting heavy things and maybe some jujitsu three times a week. But then all other forms of specifically of cardio kind of probably have to go. Okay. I think it's finally listen to you would be the be the way to put it. Uh, not so much my body. My body never wants to listen to me. So I don't really, I don't really listen to what it says. Um, well, now you literally, your body doesn't listen to you, especially on your right side. So you're probably, yeah, you, you have enough of a, of a, of a past history where you're like, you know, fuck listening to my body. Cause it doesn't listen to me. Right. It's like, Hey, we don't want to do this. And I'm like, well, we're doing it. Let's go. Um, which that's probably where the overtraining comes from. Mm-hmm. I do. I have to watch it sort of weightlifting. Cause I'm like, is this a, is this a cerebral palsy can't lift this thing? Or is this a, like, I am not strong enough to lift this thing. Right. And they're very different, very different categories. Yeah. And your uh, connective tissue will remind you quickly. Right. Which one right. it is. <laughs> um, so, you know, uh, just to be accountable, you know, maybe we'll like set some goals or something and redo this a year from now and see, see like the benefit of your, your advice and my hard work and see, yeah. see what came out of that. Um, I have a list of questions in the chat that nobody can see, but uh, I think we'll hammer something out. But I want to show people, you know, it's possible. It's harder for me, but that doesn't mean you can't do it. Um, you know, it's fundamental building blocks and everyone can do these building blocks. I can't get 10,000 steps in a day, but we can sort of talk about how to get around that. Just get the fundamentals right and we'll see what happens. Right. Right. And, and you know, it sounds so corny. But a can-do attitude goes a long way. And I, I talked about it in a couple episodes ago about like just changing your perspective on it. And most people, myself included, would look at kind of a lack of progress after working hard and look at it as like, well, fuck, I'm screwed. I, I want to give up. And your, your take is, is almost military-esque. It's like, okay, I've assessed the situation. Now we adapt and change. And what can I yeah. what, Like I said at the beginning of this interview – you just have such a amazing view of the horizon and you're you're connected to that journey even though the horizon has never been a finish line for you it's just like i said you're you're just constantly moving forward with a connection to where where you're at and what you're doing and it's very very inspiring yeah i mean there's there's cautions to it that i have to be cognizant of mm-hmm. uh, there's that old saying and it was two authors discussing or an author and someone very rich and it's actual historical people but i can't remember the names right now so i apologize um and someone's book had just sold a bunch and he's like um the other person was like you know your book sold a lot but i'll have something you'll never have and he's like what is that and the answer is enough um so you know striving towards an unmeetable goal you have to watch it if i have to give any piece of advice meditation has been a absolute game changer for me um yeah i have a positive mindset but it's not all the time and something meditation has helped me do is sort of be cognizant of when For me, meditation is like you're watching traffic and the traffic is your thoughts. And when I, when I meditate regularly, I can see, see my thoughts going by and you can catch the negative thoughts and be like, that's a negative thought. Is that a real negative thought? Like, is this an issue that I need to work on? Or is this just me being, me being a negative person? Is this Mm -hmm. just typical down? And you sort of push that out of your head. And then, you know, the positivity thing, that's just the way to go through life. There's people that have it tougher than me. Very, very much tougher than me. Like I said, I'm in the one percent, so uh, I gotta gotta use my gift here. I can't just squander it and be, you know, just be another lump on a log. Right. Um, and you know, I, there's people been telling me since day one I can't do things. When I was in like seventh grade, some teacher told me I should have gone to a special school. Uh, yeah, in front of my parents, which was a great time. Um, and you know, I made it through law school and all that and have a nice job. So, I, but you've never ever had any cognitive disability no. ever. And no, mm, 
Uh, the only there's like two <laughs> that weird teacher's way. interesting. Yeah, I still deal with it. Um, I still get the you know it's great that you have a job. Like for instance, I'll tell people I work at the firm I work at, and their first question is, "As an attorney?" Uh, and I'm like, "Yes." You know, I think they're implying that like someone in a wheelchair can't work be an in the attorney. You work in the mail room, right? Yeah. Yes, yes. I work in the I'm the mascot only. Uh, or uh, when I go to new gyms, I will get asked by people like are you a member here that kind of thing <laughs> like i shouldn't be shouldn't be lifting weights or something do you own this uh, place yeah 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 stuff like that so i guess that's part of the positive mindset thing i just sort of brush it off yeah uh and deal with it because you know you can't control what other people do you can sort of only control how you do it um but you know i think the the number one breakthrough as far as making any progress in any area in life is learning to enjoy the incremental steps and find joy in that. Um, cause anything, anything worth doing, writing a book, you know, gaining generational wealth, being fit, doing anything takes time. Like starting a farm, building a farm, it, it's incremental steps. You can't, yes. you can't build it all in three days. Um, I wish, I wish it was like those little sim video games and I could build it in like 45 minutes, but it's not. Oh, don't, those are like my addiction. I can't even have those on my computer. They're just, they're too good. Because I'm like, oh, this is great. Don't have to put in any of the effort. Um, and then, you know, that's the great thing about fitness is there's like a tangible, tangible benefit to it. Sometimes you can work at things and you, you don't know for five years that this was worth it. Um, but, you know, you can get DEXA scans every two months or six weeks or four weeks and be like, oh, this happened, that happened. It's great. Um, yeah. It, I, I've always, and also there's no outside variables in, right. in like like with surfing or with building a farm or with uh with with jujitsu there's there even if you you have patience you work hard there's going to be outside variables um you know like maybe you don't have the best instructor or you don't you're not close to a good school or uh maybe you know this where you live you're not capable of having good surf all the time you know what i'm saying like out yes. here like i could be really devoted to building this chicken coop on this part of the land and then i realized oh my gosh there's a family of wolves that are uh, a family of foxes that are eating all my chickens if i put it there and i have to elevate and i was like oh but with fitness you know just like the the x's and o's of it it's all about like i know that that weighs 100 pounds that dumb and it'll weigh 100 pounds tomorrow it'll weigh 100 pounds if i'm in a bad mood or a good mood and it's like really clear you know i always loved that it's, yeah, that's that's the best part, and it's also the it, it, you can't BS yourself. Uh, like I lifted that yesterday, or I lifted that last session, didn't lift it this session, or haven't lifted it for three sessions. What am I doing wrong? Right. Um, and you know, there's not not everything in life gives you that kind of feedback, which is it's great to have. Um, so I will you tell know. you very, 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 very passionately, parenting is not that way. Oh, oh, there's no clear line to whether things are going well or going poorly every sure. time I was, I was like why is this happening i'm sure you're doing great uh i try i really try hard hey i think dr drew says right as long as you're if you're trying and caring you're you you need to be less worried than yeah you should be. yeah i i've always like the thing that i've noticed is that guys my age my peers the ones that are really cocksure about the fact that they're great fathers are typically the ones that are, I'm always like, uh, it's always the guys that go, I just don't know if I'm doing it right, man. And, and, and have that constant internal struggle and questioning themselves. I go, I, I say, I recognize it's like the fact that you're thinking that I think is a pretty good sign, you know? Right. Uh, and you know, a great analogy to that is combat sports. The guy's like, Oh, I could beat that guy up. You're like, Oh, this guy will be fun. Or the, I don't need to train, bro. I just see red. I see red is the best. The, the, the just bleed guys are the best. Yeah. 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 Um, granted, I'm a huge UFC fan and we'll get along with those just bleed fans, but still it's, it's great. Um, yeah. You're, you're doing great as a dad. I'm sure. Uh, no kids for me. So just me being solo and worrying about my fitness problems and trying to babysit clients. If I'm a dad, that's what I do. I babysit it's, clients clients. All day. it's a good attorney. All right. Where can people keep in touch with you? monitor you see your progress see how you are connected to your journey yeah so i'm on uh instagram at that jake denim i'm sure we'll drop a link in the notes yep 
uh, I have a blog. Um, it's, it hasn't been updated in a minute. It's jakedenham.net. Uh, most of my content is sort of business book related, but I'm going to sort of branch out into more of fitness and life philosophy stuff as well. Um, because, you know, I feel compelled to share it. And if you don't want to read it, don't read it. But I'm sure hopefully somebody will get some value out of it. Uh, and those two are probably the best way to reach me. Um, d- profiles open, DMs are open. So I will answer any questions. And please do not hesitate to answer or ask fitness or disability related questions. You know, the reason I wanted to do this was sort of be an advocate for cerebral palsy and fitness in general and people overcoming challenges. So please reach out to me. I will answer any and all questions, fitness related. Uh, I will probably defer to Mike here on most fitness questions, but I'll answer what I can. Um, definitely any cerebral palsy or disability related questions, I will answer anything and everything. Um, I understand if you're hesitant to ask someone who's disabled that you might know a question that you want an answer to. Um, I will gladly answer them. Um, I made myself an open book for the purpose of, you know, sort of advancing knowledge around cerebral palsy as well as fitness in general. So I will gladly answer any questions um, or, you know, just connect and share your fitness journey too. I'd love to do that. I need inspiration too. Um, And not just good looking women on Instagram, just people overcoming things as well. So uh, connect with me. Uh, That'd be great. And, um, you know, hopefully uh, Mike and I'll do this again soon or at least in a year, and we can update you guys on um, how far I've come or if I've continued to overwork myself and (laughs) somehow turned into a female with my lack of testosterone. But even that would, I think, be really helpful to people because then you see it. You know, I I think hearing people like fitness experts talk about things, sometimes it just kind of lives in the abstract, but when you can watch it, you know? Yeah, yeah. And I'll try to go beyond just workout videos. I'll try to post like, you know, this is the challenges I face, stuff like that, and sort of just give general feedback. Um, and, you know, I know I, I know I just talked about working out too much, but there's a quote by Theodore Roosevelt that I tend to live by that I think is great. Um, it's I'll do the abbreviated version, but we can either uh, wear out or rust out, and I'm going to choose to wear out and not rust out. So get out there and be active. Don't let life pass you by. It's amazing, man. And uh, I would have imagined you'd be more of an FDR guy, you know, with the wheelchair. But but uh, Teddy, uh, it's, it's Teddy. a rivalry. It's a rivalry. I can't. <laughs> Thank you so much, man. I genuinely, like, sincerely from the bottom of my heart, I, I appreciate it. It was a really great interview, and and uh, means a lot to me. And because yeah. um, I, I I enjoy interacting with you, and it it just means a lot to me that you would think to turn to me for assistance and guidance. Uh, it's still like I, I, you and all the patrons that, you know, we were strangers and the fact that you would choose me, it's, um, it's really meaningful. So thank you. Thank you, Mike. It's all you.